My father gave me the greatest gift anyone could give another person. He believed in me. Jim Valvano, American college basketball player, coach, and broadcaster. All right, welcome to another episode of Dad Talk. Dad Talk is my series to bring on everyday dads to talk about whatever is important to them. The goal of Dad Talk is to raise dad voices. And my only ask is that whatever we talk about is related to them raising their kids. Today, Jeremy Todd joins me in this episode to discuss his future excitement regarding coaching his son and his son's peers. Please welcome Jeremy Todd to Dad Talk. Jeremy, how are you? Hey, doing well. Thanks for having me on, DL. Glad to finally return the favor after a couple years. Right. So this this is going to be fun. Yeah. Because little known secret, probably a secret that everybody knows. I'm not a sports person. Okay. So I'm going to be learning. And taking notes here, I might have to rewatch this podcast and be like, what do you say about this? Yeah. You know, so this is going to be a lot of fun for me just because uh, my son is in sports and he's right now taking BJJ. So uh, some yeah. jujitsu. Yeah. And then he's also in soccer and he just finished up with basketball. And so he's five. So mm -hmm. pretty much I can teach him stuff yeah. about sports right now, but it won't be long before I need to level up yeah, and, or, or, or like just step back and just let the coaches handle it. Yeah. So tell us about you being a dad, just kind of introduce yourself for everybody sure. and then we'll dive right in. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jeremy. Um, I am uh, originally from the Birmingham, Alabama area. I've moved around. So I've got lots of friends uh, in uh, the world and the Liberty movement and, Texas and uh, lived in South Carolina for a while, uh, you know, the Phoenix area. And uh, recently, about two years ago, moved to the Cincinnati area in northern Kentucky. Um, uh, my son, Conrad, was born in 2021. Um, so he is uh, three years old. And uh, my wife and I have been married since 2018. Nice. Nice. So three years old. So is he doing any sports? I mean, I know he's not like, but like, are you going out and like trying to like no, or anything no, like that yet? no, not yet. We are um, sort of on the cusp of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Much like the BJJ, I uh, ha have been interested in trying to get him in karate. It's sort of the one thing that uh, you can put a three-year-old in. I think there's some soccer, but that's with three-year-olds just kind of organized chaos. And it's really more of right. a comedy show for the parents. Right. Uh, there's no real teaching or coaching going on. It's just uh, kind of fun. But uh Around the age of five or six, um, I, I have a feeling we're going to have uh, sort of a sp sports monster on our hands. Uh, even though I was a small kid, I grew into a very big one, if any of you mm -hmm. have met me. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, grandpa on mom's side, big dude, too. Um, so uh, we we and, and he's very active, lots of energy, mm -hmm. uh, very contact prone loves to jump off of things fearless oh, nice. a bit. Yeah. So we're going to have to figure out how to channel that into something productive. Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I think about, I think it was about three. Mm -hmm. We started swim classes for him, which is, you know, it's not an organized like team sport. Right. Um, but, um, and, and there were lessons, so he wasn't really learning sporting, per, uh, you know, per se, sure. but, um, it was funny because he would go to swim class, he would get excited, and then it just seemed like all of a sudden one day he didn't want to swim anymore, and yeah. he refused to go in. And you know this because he's your, your child's three. When your child has decided they're not doing something, yeah, like you just go with it, yeah, like that's the. And so we'd like paid for these swim classes, and we're like, and he's refusing. I mean. We could physically drag him in, but he'd be yeah. kicking and screaming, and that's not going to be good for the place. He's right. certainly not prepared to go in the water. So he was it was just starting at that point. Yeah. So it was just like, I, I guess we're not swimming today. Right. And and then we had this thing where 
his schedule would shift. And so like he might get up at 6 a.m. on a regular basis and then all of a sudden start getting up at like five or okay. get up at seven. Right. Like and especially before school, like it didn't matter. Like, OK, whatever. Just let him sleep. Right. And then he would it, we, we didn't have a structure like, OK, it's one o'clock. Now it's time for your nap. And we, we kind of tried that and it worked until he shifted his schedule yet again. And so then we just started letting him take a nap whenever. And it was funny because we would try to go to events and we would be like, all right, let's try to get him down for a nap so that he's, you know, not too tired and cranky afterward. Yeah. And it would be, he would, he would kind of fight it. And then he might, like, if he had to be somewhere at like, say, 5 30, he might fall asleep at like 4 30. Yeah. It'd be like, funny how they know. Yeah. And you're like, dude. And so then we tried waking him up a couple of times and that was really dangerous Yeah, because is. you could have a monster the rest of the night Yeah, because, you know, interrupt his, his Ram or whatnot. And so it was interesting now that he's five, yeah. um, five and a half technically, but you know, um, things are a little bit more regular. And so we don't have nearly that same problem. Although we did have it just the other day at BJJ, he fell asleep on the way there. Yeah, And I happened to get yeah. there like 30 minutes early and I thought, no big deal. I'll let him sleep. So I just played on my phone, let him sleep in the car. And time came and I was like, all right, turn the car off. I go wake him up. And he was still kind of in. You could tell he was. Yeah, he was he's not in it. Yeah. And he just stood there for like it was an hour long class. And he's like for the for 40 minutes. And then finally, like the last 20 minutes, he decided to join him. Involved, I was yeah. like, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, it, you know, I'm looking forward to those days. I don't obviously um, one of the things I try to do is um, have you ever heard the old adage of like uh, when you're 80, uh, if a time traveler came to you, you'd give anything to come back to this day at this moment, this random day at this moment and just be where your feet are. So I try not to look forward to four and five and six and mm -hmm. just be like really appreciative and enjoy the three year olds. Right. And three year olds are like trying to contain a live grenade and play hot mm -hmm. potato with it. Um, and they have very little comprehension skills. You can't explain things to them. So right. um, I totally. I mean, you can because I did. It just yeah, doesn't really just doesn't work. work. Right. So you're a lot of times if it's not something <laughs> important that there's a lesson to take from it, you have to go hop on them and just physical removal of things like I mm -hmm. can't tell you how many times I've carried my kid out under my arm and just like this is what it's going to be, buddy. You're going to have to get upset. Uh, so, yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, it was a four month period, maybe five month period where he would out of nowhere just snap. Yeah. And would go berserk and would run around the house screaming, which we're like, okay, whatever you're going to run around. But then he would find something big and heavy and like go to launch it across yeah. the room. And, you know, and, and we like our house has a lot of large windows, like all over the place. And so it's a very dangerous, it's, yeah. you know, it's very dangerous to have a little toddler throwing something. Yes. And you, you, you couldn't yell at him. Uh, I know libertarians won't like this, but you know, a little small swat on the butt wasn't going to work. Right. Yeah. That didn't work either. You know, I told my wife, I was like, we'd have to hit him so hard that it would be like it would be violence. Yeah, right? you have to get point. their attention. That and that's so the big I just would just bear hug him and just hold yeah. him for like 10 minutes sometimes yeah. to 10 minutes before Screaming. he finally would he would just be screaming, let me go. Ah, ah, you know, and then I would just bear hug him. Yeah. And then uh and 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 then finally he would be like, hey, you're you're hurting me or something. That would be that would be the yeah, point yeah. where he was ready to chill out. Yeah. And you could let go safely. Yeah. But I wasn't hurting him. I mean, he just, no, like, yeah. Just be what, it well, what, what here's what I do because this is 100% true. I actually had to do this today. Um, they, they turn, they have these moments of rage. And it, it turns out, I, I heard a, I, I saw a TikTok on it. If, uh, if you're a dad, you end up on like dad TikToks at some point. And um, this uh, professor or doctor was uh, talking about, that uh, prepubescent boys get these random bursts of testosterone that are on equivalent levels of what happened when they go through puberty. So they don't get it constantly wow. like you do during puberty, but they get these bursts of enough testosterone that is like for a 14, 15 year old boy. And so that, yeah, that, that I was like, okay, now that I know that's what's happening, I know right. how I have to address this. And so he does his thing. He starts bouncing around. And I did. So I do something similar. I'm like, OK, bro, you want to go? Let's escalate this problem because I'm, right. I'm a bigger guy and I can be a bigger problem than you. 
So we right. go upstairs to the bed. And I mean, I start chunking this kid across the room and we get real physical activity going like big movements, big slams. We wrestle. I, mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. squish him and press him down. Um, like I like to put him in a Boston crab sometimes, if you remember mm -hmm. that, like, I'm right. like, ah, and basically what you have to do is you have to sort of get him to a moment of like, like almost like he wants to go work out. And if you go work out and you strain enough, it, it sort of works its way into fatigue. Right. And that's what was, it sounds like that's what's what was happening with your son. And that yeah. is what I have found is kind of the best thing is like, Make him strain to the point where he's like, okay, yeah, you're right. I don't want this problem anymore. Right. Like, all right, tune it down. And so, um, and it's fun. It's not harmful to them. Right. Uh, uh, they do get a little frustrated with you, like you said, where they're mm -hmm. like, ah, let me go. You're hurting me. But then it's over and they're back to, to peace. Yeah, it was, it, it made me nervous because he, he would turn into this rage monster mm -hmm. and for like, 10, 15, 20, sometimes he went up to toward a half an hour. It was just full on rage. And it would be over something like we would be coming home and he would be like, no, I want you to turn right. We're like, well, our house is turning left. And he's like, no, no, turn no, right. He right. Had, I said right. Yeah. And he had no particular reason. He just wanted right. to turn right. And we're like, no, we're going home. And we would make that turn. And then he would just lose it. Done. He would yep. just go berserk. And then, um, and, and, and so all we could do was just try to contain him so that he didn't break anything or yeah. hurt himself, yeah. you know, and he, but otherwise you just had to wait it out. Like, yeah. he, like there was no response. There was no like, Hey man, calm down, take a breath. Like he just didn't care. He yeah, was exactly. just yeah. and I my was wife, like, my wife tries that. Uh, cause she's read it in all the books and I'm like, you don't understand this kid is going to beat your ass. Right. right. He is going to hurt you. And he often would as a three-year-old, like she'd catch an elbow to the nose. And I'm like, let me handle this. You're not going to like this, but like right. you have to be big, intimidating and imposing on them in a way that is fun and playful and helps them get their energy out and get right. through this. But like, if you're trying to get down there and be like, Hey buddy, no, that he's going to, he's going right. to, he's going to win that battle. Now, now he's long since passed those. Like he doesn't get into rage fits like that anymore. Like he'll get mad, mm -hmm. and he he gets a little spiteful these days. Like <laughs> if, if he's mad, like let let me put it this way: like ninety five to ninety eight percent of the time, mm -hmm. he is just awesome. Yeah, I mean, people are like, your kid is so nice and polite. And he talks so well and he's behaved and he listens. And like, we have like, like compared to his daddy, like you might even think that he, that, that I'm not his daddy based on behavior. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was a hellion, yeah, like something too. else. And he is not at all like that. Um, although every great once in a while, and it's usually when he's tired. Yeah. It's it, he very, very infrequently, like almost never acts up unless he's tired or maybe hungry or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. unless there's like a serious, reason. but otherwise for the most part, he is like a total angel. He's just, he, he's, he's great to be around. And so it's, it's pretty amazing because for a while I was like, what, ha what, what do we got? What, here? what is happening? Yeah. You know, because I was like, how long is it? Is, is the this book temporary? didn't talk about this. Yeah. Like, like, is this temporary or is this gonna, like, we're going to have to deal with this forever. Cause like, like how many times I go bear hug him? Like, yeah, well, it, it's <laughs> like, what, what, what do I do when I tell him to take a big breath and he punches me in the face? Like, right. you know, like how does gentle parenting handle that? And it's like, right. oh yeah, you, you do the bear hug or you wrestle or you, you got to get yeah. this out. We've uh, been wrestling lately. Actually, yeah. that's been a new thing that we've been doing. And because he has a tendency to be a little bit, um, like I'll say he's delicate, mm -hmm. right? He's like, he's a lovable kid. I love my son. But, he, but yeah. again, compared to what I remember growing up, he's delicate. You know, I bounce yeah. his body all over the pavement, like face first, all over, yeah. the, you know, just yeah. whatever. And like he gets the tiniest little scratch and he's like acting as if he's been shot by a bullet, you know, yeah. and he's like, I need a yeah. band aid. And you're like, you're not even bleeding, but I need a band aid. There's a scratch. And I'm like, you'll be fine. Band -Aid's no, it it, right? You know, right. And so we started play fighting because yeah. he just wanted to one day. And then it clicked in because he caught a knuckle to his tooth. Yeah. And I just instinctively, I didn't freak out. I just instinctively was like, Hey, you all right. Yeah. And just saying that not even freaking out, just saying it, he was all like, and he started to like well up and cry. Yeah. And I was like, nah, you good. I was like, let's keep going. And I kept, yeah, kind of, and he just, 
he just dove right back in and I was like, that's it. That's there it how is. to get him to be wow. less delicate without overdoing it. Yeah. You know? It, it, yeah, it's all, it, it has a lot to do with how we respond. And the reality is, is there is a transition and I'm noticing this too. Um, even though I had the privilege of staying home with him for a total of, I've gotten to stay home and be a stay at home dad in the first three years of his life, a total of 13 months or okay. so, um, which was really great. Um, but uh, even then it was always mom. Like mm -hmm. he's still attached to mom. It was yep, very yep. much, he's mama's boy. Um, and there is that moment of uh, where he's sort of like now transitioning into from a baby to a kid mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, now it's time to model dad and, and, and learn how to respond uh, in that way. And so that's been an interesting struggle a little bit because mom still wants to baby him and, and mm -hmm. he's used to getting that response from mom. Oh my gosh, is my baby? Okay. Is everything fine? And he responds appropriately when you respond right. in that way. But I've had to step in and be like, uh -uh, don't say a word. You good. Right. Take it off. Yeah. What do we do? What are we brave and tough? That's right. And right. so he he's learning and she's all concerned about like, Oh, well, I don't want him to think like he can't cry. As I, I'm like, look, there's a difference between responding tough to physical pain right. and pushing down emotional pain. This right, is right. An emotional pain for him. He's not going through trauma right now. Right. He is he scraped his knee and he's learning that like just because it hurts doesn't mean it's always going to hurt and that I can keep playing if I mm -hmm. respond appropriately. Right. Um, and so there, there are family dynamics of that. And uh, I think what's going to be interesting about sports is you bring about, you sort of force these situations to happen right. on a schedule frequently. Yep. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I think, what's exciting. Like, like why I'm so excited about it is it's fi it finally gets to be my boy instead mm -hmm. of my baby, you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've... I don't think we had quite the challenge. My wife isn't super hardcore. She still has the emotional side of her as well. She seems um, like a good cookie though, DL. Like my, my wife, very soft, very right. emotionally tender. I mean, she's much more than I am, but yeah. she's not like super duper soft, right? And so what I told her, I said, you know, I want to, and, and I use the words toughen up because I didn't have a better word for it necessarily. Yeah, don't but I don't want to, I tell people, I'm like, I'm not trying to tough them up like, and I make the joke like, like I'm a Russian and I'm all like, yeah, pour some vodka on it. It'll be fine. Go play. Right. 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 Broken bone. No big deal. Right. You know, like, I'm not trying to, you know, be like Rocky three. Yeah. You know, like if he dies, he dies. He'd be <laughs> all right. right. You know? And I said, but at the same time, I want him to be able to learn that there are times where you just get up and you shake it off and you keep going playing, Go you, you continue yeah. playing. And then there are other times where, okay, yeah, this one does need a, a hug from mommy or daddy. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and then as he gets older, then you, you shift away from fewer hugs from mommy and daddy, not zero, right. Fewer, right. Because he becomes more, um, more capable of managing himself. Like, Hey, sure. I got hurt. Okay. You know, I'm going to, you know, scream and yell a little bit, maybe even shed a few tears, but then I got to get up and I got to move on. Or maybe I go to the, you know, Maybe I go to the doctor because, you know, I broke my toe or something like that, Right. you know, but he eventually shifts more and more away from hugs and from mommy and daddy for, from getting hurt, but never down to zero. Right. right? Like, right. I, I assume, you know, when he's trying to think of how, when he's 60, I'll be 80. I think, I think I'll still, something. no, no, I, no. When he's 60, I'll be a hundred. So I might not be around when he's 60, but let's say when he's 40, right. right? When he's 40, I'll be 80 and maybe he still wants a hug. Okay, cool. Right. Like, yeah, I think that still is, is a good thing to have, but I just want him to be able to operate in the world appropriately. Yes. That, you know? And that's incredibly important. And I think for both, for, 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 and Dave actually, Dave Smith actually said this the other day. And I was like, wow, that makes so much sense that he didn't actually feel like he had to really become much of a father until his son was born and then a light bulb <laughs> came on. Because he knew that his wife was so exceptional and going to be a great role model for his daughter that he could just point to her and be right. like, just, 
listen and be and do everything like your mother. But when his son came into the world, he realized like, no, this is different. I actually have to prepare a man to be a man in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a different challenge. And yes. it's not a challenge that if you, and I, I'm not, I'm not going on some anti-feminist rant here. Single moms are uh, heroes for sticking around and doing their best, but the evidence shows that they can't. They simply right. can't teach a man There's how a to limit. Be in the world, right? It's just not, it, it, which is totally understandable. And so that's the role. It, what we're talking about right now is 100% the role of the dad to go, listen, you, right. you need to be exposed to these things. And then it's our job to show you, we'll, we'll give you the hug. We're here for you. We're here, here to help you through it. But it's our job not to let it in there. And that's right. what I think mothers would do is they console you. You'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's move on. Whereas dads are go, will go, hey, do you remember how that happened? What lesson did you take from that? Right. And do you notice how five minutes ago you thought the world was over and this was the greatest pain you'd ever felt? And right now you're perfectly fine. Right. Remember that next time. That's yep. important to remember that the next time you scrape your knee, yeah, it hurts but it won't hurt forever. Right. And you will be better and you right. will be able to move on. And that's how they develop tolerance, resiliency, toughness, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of those values that make men innately men. Right. Absolutely. So sports. Yeah. What, what is your favorite, like your favorite sport, maybe your top two. Yeah, dude, I am from, I am from Alabama. There's no top two. Um, okay. it, is, it is college <laughs> football. It is tackle football in the okay. old school sense of the word. Um, I have become a little bit of a fan of basketball, um, just watching. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I never played basketball. I couldn't tell you a thing about basketball beyond like coaching the littlest of little kids, like you were saying. Um, and then believe it or not, my third favorite sport to uh, enjoy or watch is uh, women's college softball. Um, okay. A lot of it has to do with what is Alabama good at? Okay. And uh, we were we've always been sort of the, the the elite program in college football, even before Nick Saban. We had some down years, but still. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, we've gotten really good at college basketball. And so I've started to enjoy it a lot. And we've always been kind of a powerhouse in softball. So um, those are the three that I ended up consuming because being an Alabama fan. Um, but uh, in defense of the game of softball, it's way more entertaining than baseball they uh they have seven innings the games go quick it's an hour and a half two hours uh shorter base paths mean more hits more steals um a little bit different strategy um and so i it's it's a ton of fun way more exciting than baseball to me so yeah we haven't gotten into baseball he's got like a little t-ball set but we haven't really gotten in, gotten into baseball just yet yeah. um so far we have done soccer which he really likes and he's pretty good at uh, basketball is a work in progress. Yeah. Um, he's, and he, but again, he's only five. Right. Yeah. And he, and the other thing is he doesn't have any siblings or neighborhood kids that he can regularly play basketball with and learn from. Right. right. So, um, so when he got out there, um, he's, uh, he, he tends to, to avoid the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, how all the kids, like if you've ever watched them, they'll all bunch up. Yeah. Right. And into a, like a big crowd. And he's not quite interested in being in there because he doesn't want to like fall and get hurt or anything like that. Right. Um, he's like when they sometimes fight over the ball, like one kid will try to grab the ball from the other kid and who's holding it. And then they just both are trying to, you know, snatch the ball away, kind of get into a little tugging contest. Uh, I think once I saw him holding onto the ball, but otherwise he generally doesn't, you know, that's just, that's just not his thing. He hasn't done football yet. Yeah. Um, so we'll see, we'll, we'll see about football. Now, the good thing about football is I think at his age, I don't think they do tackle. I think they only do flag football when they're younger. They do in the South. They have tackle football. I started at five. Um, okay. and, but I am not sure if they do it here. And, uh, that puts a real rain on my parade. Um, because that was the one I was, I was pretty excited to, uh, to get an opportunity. Don't get me wrong. Listen, I, I even had a conversation with my wife last night. Um, I'm pretty sure I have at least double digit undiagnosed concussions um, from just a uh, five through age five through 17 uh, playing career. So what is that? 12 years. And I think I didn't play for one. Um, that's 11 years. Um, I'm pretty sure I have 10 undiagnosed concussions in that time period. Mo not, not any when I was super young, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot in high school. 
Um, and um, I, I, I worry uh, about, I can already tell I have sort of like cognitive issues, executive functioning, ADHD. I, I've always been somebody who had ADHD, but it's, it's different now. Mm. Um, and I can tell, um, and uh, I, I haven't struggled with the memory loss yet, but there are moments where I'm like, oh no, this could be it. And I could just be in my own head, you know? Right. Um, right. But I, I, I worry about that. Um, at the same time, um, when you have a coach who is aware and actually cares about that, a lot of it, a lot of these collisions happened at practice. Um, and it was just, coaches didn't know, like we didn't mm. know that getting your bell rung could actually lead you to have a, uh, you know, a chronic brain injury that impacted you when you're 40 years later. Right. They assumed right. your bell gets wrong. You shake it off 10 minutes. You're good. You're ready to go back in. Right. Um, but now with the knowledge, the uh, advancement in helmet technology, the guardian caps they wear at practice, um, I feel a lot better about it. Uh, and, and it puts an emphasis on playing the game safely uh, with head injuries in mind. So I'm still I'm still kind of up in the air on when I want him to start tackle. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I, I, I know that I do young because there were fundamental, the issue, here's the issue. Um, I went to my first spring training for high school football when I was in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I had just probably hit puberty in seventh grade. And so I was still like skinny bean pole kid. Mm -hmm. um, I was still maybe five foot three at the time. Um, and hey, I'm I going, still am. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, at the time, five foot three, maybe, maybe a buck 11, 111 pounds. And I'm going up against dudes who are going into their fourth year of high school, have gone all the way through puberty are like uh, 225, 230 at practice. And mm -hmm. if I didn't have 10 years of fundamental technique practice, knowing that I've got to get my head across and low to use the leverage on people's legs, follow hips, all of these things that I'd learned in younger football. And I had mm -hmm. just rolled out there for the first, like if spring training of my eighth grade year was my first exposure to football, I would I, I would have been hurt uh, significantly, nice. and then I also uh, probably never would have played uh, and enjoyed what was uh, a, a pretty decorated high school football career. Um, so it, it's one of those things where I'm I do want to get him in there young so that he can learn the fundamentals, the techniques, because that jump, man, it's uh, it was. I still remember Tommy Tolles knocking the piss out of me, um, and. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's, it, it's something that'll live on. I, I'll never forget that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's why, um, I do kind of want them to, to start young. Right. And, and, you, and I'm kind of hoping that self. if he gets into fo uh, football, it'll be flag football simply yeah. because, um, I know that, you know, he's, he is not, uh, daring like I am. He doesn't have the, you might call it foolish resilience yeah right because i would do things and then do them again despite the fact that i literally got hurt yeah right and i would be i would just do the same stupid thing again yeah. uh you, you know didn't really learn the lesson just thought okay i did it wrong so i gotta do it right so i don't get hurt this time yeah. you know and and which in some ways it's true but not not many of the ways that i did it <laughs> uh, many of the ways I, I was just doing something that i shouldn't have been doing in the first place yeah and um so what i what i don't want to have happen is I don't want him to get involved in something right away. And before he's learned to enjoy it, maybe get an injury and even a small injury that freaks him out. And he's like, yeah. you know what the heck yeah. with this? And so I'm slowly trying to build his resiliency to taking hits. Yeah. So for instance, yeah. 100%. we're talking about wrestling and stuff. And I told my wife this the other day, I was like, he doesn't, I'm like, he doesn't know why I do it, but I take like, he has like these boxing gloves and I'll let him wear the boxing gloves. And then, He's like, I don't, you know, obviously I'm pulling all of my, my punches and whatever, you know, because he's five, but, um, I, I don't, I don't take any, I don't ask him to pull any of his, I just, you know, like, Hey, don't hit in the groin and no throwing hard toys. Right. Like we very right. basic rules, um, just to keep any serious injuries from happening, but I'll slap him from some yeah. time, 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 like, not like 
rear back and just right, right, right. Pick, as we're playing, just reach up and just give him a little slap on the Catch cheek, him. yeah, so that he feels it, yeah. And, and like again, it's not like I'm not leaving a mark. I'm. Mean, it's not very hard at all. It's just enough where, if it were outside of the context mm -hmm. of wrestling, he would probably cry. Yeah. And I do that on purpose so that he can start getting used to a tiny little sting. Yeah. Like, hey, you remember when we were wrestling and you get slapped like it, it you know, it, it didn't hurt. Right. So that he learns because, you know, I, again, I want him to build a little resilience. He says some pain, like not again, we're not, we're not trying to overdo it. Right. Just enough so that if he gets, if he, if he gets knocked down in soccer by accident, which could happen mm -hmm. and he takes a, 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 a foot to his cheek. Yeah then, you know, he might need to get up and sit out for a couple of minutes, but he's not so distraught that he won't go back in at all. Yeah. That's not what I want. And I know, I know there's going to be a day where he's going to get knocked down. You know, he's going to get an elbow, his own elbow in his ribs. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to, you know, a foot to the wherever, you know, the hip or, you know, maybe, maybe the head, you know, like that's, you know, it's inevitable. He's going to, he's going to take a hit somehow, somewhere. And I just want him to, to not like totally uh, be so unused to it yeah, that it catches him so hard, you know, like even if it's a softer one that it, that it means, you know, the end of the world is basically, you know, I just trying to keep him prepared. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And if he's exposed to it, he's prepared for it. Let me ask you a question because this is something that um, my wife and I discuss from time to time. Um, there, so when it comes to stuff like this, like exposing them to very tough situations or, um, you know, for instance, uh, she, she thinks it's very unnecessary that I ever raise my voice. Well, I, a lot of times when I raise my voice, it's to grab attention. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then we bring it back down and it's right. not out of anger, or like, you know, screaming. But, um, my point is, and this is my position is that I would rather it be from me in a controlled setting where I know that he's safe mm -hmm. um, and he can learn how to respond to it. And her position is, well, why should he think that his dad is going to behave that way? Um, right. Why should we train him that this is who dad is? Um, what's your take on that? So my first take, the first part of that, the first part of this take will be, this is always something that has to be worked out between two couples or, or two, between a couple. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day. Now, for me, I happen to be a bit of a yeller. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the guy who like a lot of people are like, dude, deal so nice. And he's just so chill. Uh, you've never you've never had me as a project manager. <laughs> um, and, 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 and I can get very mean and nasty. And despite being five foot three and 120 pounds, um, there does come a point where I don't care if you're built like a linebacker. Yeah. If I got something to say to you, I'm going to say it. And if I get to that point, I'm probably yelling at the same time. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I, I and I did this, I don't even know why I did this, but it has been phenomenal for me as a um, as a dad. I do. I can have a bit of a temper because people get on my nerves mm -hmm. and I'm mouthy and I'm not afraid to take a punch. So that doesn't help. Right. So like it doesn't, it doesn't control me necessarily. Right. However, age has a little bit. Um, but the first thing that I did was I decided in my mind that there were certain things that were just going to happen. Yeah. And so like my, my, the great example I love giving is I knew that he was going to draw on the walls at some point. Okay. I just kind of got it in my head. He's going to draw on the walls. So when he inevitably drew on our walls, I didn't freak out and get all angry because I was expecting it. Yeah. Right. Now there are some, you, you can't, you can't expect everything. Right. And then there are certain situations where, you know, maybe you might expect something, but not in this particular situation. So it gets nuanced from there. But the first thing that I did was I, I just kind of said, all right, here's all my expectations. And I, and I just started thinking of him, like, he's going to draw on the walls. He's going to get mad at me. He's going to, he's probably one day going to say, daddy, I hate you. And he's, he's done that. Like mm -hmm. he's gotten mad when I told him, no, like, you know, can I have this? And I'm like, no, you've already had, you know, enough juice or whatever, you know, maybe. And then you'll come in with a little drawing and he'll be like, this is mommy. This is daddy. And he's literally got an X through daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. And so I'm like, 
okay, well, that's that's how you feel. Like, that's fair enough. Like, whatever. Because I'm like, you know, he's got his feelings and he's allowed to have his emotions as long as they don't get out of hand. Yeah. And so, and since he's usually such a good kid, that makes it even easier for me. But there are times where I have to yell at him, right? And in my opinion, I have to yell at him. And I, I raise my voice. And as soon as I get his attention, as soon as I get him to, to dial it back, to pay attention, whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is I'm looking for, then I dial it back down. And then the biggest thing that I do, and I heard this from Jordan Peterson, actually, he was talking about like, I think it was his son. When his son would get in trouble, he would make him go sit on the stairs or something like that and, and take a few breaths and calm down. And then once his son had kind of collected himself, he could come back to the table or whatever, whatever the family was doing. And he said, once the son was done and once they resolved it, it was done. So there was no snarky comments later, like, yeah. oh, are you going to blow up like you did 20 minutes ago, like you did yesterday? So that's another thing that we will do is we will, you know, so while I might yell at him yeah. in the moment, it's, it's, it's immediately because he's repeatedly not listening. And so now I raise my voice and if he gets upset, I'm like, daddy asked you three times mm -hmm. and you didn't listen. So now I have to yell at you. Sometimes I will warn him and I'll say, yeah, do I need to get loud? Yeah. Because if I get loud, you're not going to like it. Is that yeah. what you want? Yeah. And you'll think about it. And then there are some times where I just we just straight go to yelling because maybe the situation I think is requiring of it, you know. Um, so I think it's I think it's useful. I will say this when he was a lot younger, like two, maybe two and a half, somewhere around there. I would raise my voice, you know, and be like, hey, stop. No. Right. And, I, and Christy, would be, my wife would be like, you know, Christy would say. You, you probably don't really need to yell. I mean, he's like only two. And I'm like, oh, I want him to know that I don't like this. Yeah. And so the loud voice is to indicate it's unpleasant to him. And so he knows whatever he's doing, not liked. Yeah. Because he's like two. I can't really talk. I mean, like you can have fewer conversations with a two-year-old than you can a five-year-old. Right. So I just, my mind, I'm like, the rudimentary thing here is yelling, unpleasant. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Forming you associations. Know? Yeah. And it wasn't before long before my mother-in-law was like, he listens to his daddy more than he does his mommy. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Throwing that out there. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not, we're not really a spanking kind of a home. Like yeah. it's not off the table entirely, but it rarely, rarely happens. Yeah. And even when it does, the very rare occasion is like literally like a simple one swat on the butt. I, yeah. I don't think he's ever had, bend over the knee multiple swats or anything like you know it's always been a single one basically to get his t his attention and it's been like when there's a threat of actual danger happening or if he's been uh i feel like he smacked his grandma one time like on her hip not not at all and i just reached over and gave him a slap on the cheek yeah. um and i was like don't you hit your grandma yeah. you know yeah and you know and it's it's more it's more like hard enough to get their attention, but not hard exactly. enough to leave a mark. Yeah. And we don't, I don't think we've ever done repeated. So he's only gotten like a single one when, it, when, it, when in the very rare case that it happens. Yeah. But yelling is kind of, that's kind of my thing. But even that I, I try to figure out ways to not yell. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, and I'm sure you feel this way. I don't want, I definitely don't want to hit my kid. If I can, I don't want to hit anybody really. I don't, I don't, particular like violence. I'm not afraid of it, but I don't like it. Right. right. Um, and I really don't want to yell either. I don't want to yell at him. I don't want to yell at my wife. Like these are the people that are closest to me. Yeah. You know, I would rather if I could live, let's say I'm 46 now, let's say I live for another 40 years. If I could live the next 40 years and never need to, you know, feel the need to raise my voice at my family, it would be splendid. Right. Like I would I'm no argument, no complaints there. You know, right. if we could have that. So I, so what I do is I first work on me because I can't make them not do anything that would ever get me angry. So I said, okay, back to the expectations. Let me just keep evaluating my expectations because when he was three, I expected he would draw on the wall. Mm -hmm. Now that he's five, he knows better and he doesn't draw on the wall. So now I need to adjust my expectations so that I don't really need to get mad about this if I can help it. Yeah. So yeah. long, long, long. You've prepared yourself mentally for it. Um, but, uh, it sounds like you, like me, or, or like, look, I, I think I can maintain the effective emotional connection 
and having to raise my voice or be stern or be the bad guy in certain situations doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily break that, especially right. if I'm controlled in the moment and it's not just rage, um, you know, pouring forth from me. Um, but instead it, it has a purpose and I have the ability to control it and dial it back. You know, you, you mentioned something there that, um, about your own expectations. And I think that's really important for kids. I was, I, I wrote this down the other day and it just made me think of it of like when coaching, um, how to sort of evaluate performance and where mm -hmm. a kid is at, uh, at, at, at whatever they're trying to do. And so I, I wrote these three things to understand, and I think it applies to politics too, funny enough. Right. Um, you have, and, and this, if you think of it in a political term, it's, I think you might laugh thinking. Because in that, politics, but, people act like children, but go ahead. Yes, yes. So you have the standard, right? It's the sort of uh, North Star. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect way to do things. This is 100% correct. Like that's our standard. And then behind that is though, good enough given the circumstances, right? So mm -hmm. maybe maybe your kid is giving great effort, but they're sick. And so they didn't really meet the standard, um, but you know, good enough given the circumstances. And then the third is, are we making any progress in the right direction? Right. You know, those are three sort of uh, measuring sticks uh, where- I like it. Yeah, like if we, because you can't always hold somebody to the standard. But you can give them praise if we're making progress in the right direction, right? So that's right. one way. And then you can raise it to, um, you know, uh, good enough given the circumstances. This is a satisfactory given, you know, kind of what we were up against. Um, and then the last is working towards holding them accountable towards that standard that everybody mm -hmm. has set. Um, but you can continue to, uh, those are sort of levels of reinforcement that I thought through. Um, and isn't it funny how that applies to politics? Yeah, yeah I mean, it applies Maybe we to... we need a little more praise about progress in the right direction. Probably applies to a lot of things. Like, no, the standard. <laughs> right. It probably applies to a lot of things. Work, you yeah. know, anything, anything that you're doing, right? Like, um, you know, trying to judge like, okay, uh, let's say I, let's say I'm working in the yard and I'm trying to, you know, do some new landscaping or something. I might say, you know, look at the work that I did today and, you know, and say, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, I met this standard, whatever that might be. Um, or I might say, well, you know, given the circumstances, yeah. um, you know, the work that I did today was good enough. Maybe, you know, maybe I had to do a bunch of digging and there's a bunch of tree roots. And so I modified it a little bit and then, you know, it still looks decent, but it's not quite the standard of what I was looking for. But I might say, well, given the circumstances, yeah, it was good enough. Or I might say, yeah. okay, what am I doing? I'm out here like spinning my wheels. Yeah. You know, no, but I think it, I, I think it's great. Am I making any progress in the right? Right. Direction? right. That's something that should be commended. And so these are, these are places where, um, you know, I remember my coaches used to be way nicer to me. Uh, so a little backstory, I grew a lot in high school. I went from that, you know, eighth grade, five foot three, 111 pounds to, uh, six foot one, probably 220. By the time I graduated, I changed mm -hmm. positions. My first couple of years, my coaches would, would they'd give me some ribbing and like uh, kind of give me some uh, some gentle, but it was always positive and praising. Hey, good job. Nice part. The moment I actually got good at this, it was like something went different and I'm getting yelled at, slapped upside the head, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's it's that difference between a kid who's just not there yet who's mm -hmm. making progress in the right direction. Let's protect his enthusiasm. Let's keep him uh, better. Uh, and then you work towards good enough given the circumstances. Hey, he's too small. Of course, this bigger kid is going to run right over him, but he really stuck his nose in there and, and followed all the proper techniques to now you're responsible. You're being held to the standard. You're the leader. Mm -hmm. And this is our expectation of you. And it actually got harder the better I got. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I think that's, kind of an interesting dynamic uh to understand where everybody's at understand mm -hmm. where they're at and then where do they fall into these three categories and how can you sort of hold them accountable right it's it, it's it's interesting so when you're when you're looking at coaching mm -hmm. um what about because because like we talked about like our own personal interactions with just our kid and like yeah. i've helped him with you know we've 
I've went to like his games or his practice and like, oh, he's like, even I can tell you're not doing so well here in this particular yep. area and we need to figure out how to adjust. Right. And, and, and it's really about, he just hasn't had the experience and the practice, mm -hmm. right? It's not like, that's really what it amounts to. And so I'll, I'll do some things. We'll come back. We'll come up with some sort of exercise to do. And, you know, we'll, we'll work on, you know, like when I was trying to teach him how to pass the ball, like over the kids' yeah. heads, I moved some boxes that were about, yay, about kids high, you know, kids high. And I was like, all right, you pass the ball to me over the box. Yeah. And if you drop, if you hit the box, then that means you touch their fingers or, you know, they got the ball basically, you know, and then, you know, we, we I bought some cones. And so now we're, uh, I have him like dribble around some cones. And now that he's in soccer, we'll, we'll have him, you know, go around cones with his soccer ball. Yep. Yep. So we can learn, you know, so these are simple things that I could do, but tell me about what it is that you're excited about in terms of coaching more than just your kid. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, so that's kind of interesting to me because I'm like, I get the part where like helping your kid out at least where you can. And if, yeah. if you're more sports oriented, then you can go further with that as they get older mm -hmm. without learning anything new necessarily. Whereas if you're like me, you've got about one year before you need to figure out what you're doing. Yeah. 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 hundred um, percent. So I couldn't so, coach a team. I don't think I could do that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, for me, um, it didn't, it wasn't always this way. I think when I was coming up, um, your parents were more of a threat to you than the coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so like my mom knew enough about football. I posted it the other day. Uh, it was funny. Uh, you know, they were making jokes about Kamala's sort of stump speech of my parent always used to say very common thing. Every parent said, and I said, my mom used to say, if the three technique comes across your face on an inside trap, so will I. Mm -hmm. um you know and, I don't know what that uh, means, but okay right uh it just it, it's like uh my mom's gonna slap me if i miss my block basically oh gotcha is what it, what it meant and um you know they they used to have the coaches back uh mm -hmm. like 100 percent. you can yell at my kid you can suplex my kid i do not right. care. like we got your back We're, that's we'll, how i grew up yeah all the, all the teachers not, yeah. not the coaches but the yeah. teachers yeah uh, now a little different. So, um, when, and if the day comes where I'm coaching a team, th there will be a parents meeting early to where we set the standard of like, listen, here's how it operates. If you hear me yelling at your kid, understand that I, it is, it is tough love, but it's love. Mm -hmm. Like it is, it is absolute love for them to be successful. You didn't sign them up for, and, and I will do my best to portray to them that like, I'm going to give them everything that I can to help them be successful beyond this. The, the biggest influences in my life growing up were not my parents. They were my coaches. They made the biggest difference to me. And I'm, I'm excited to have the opportunity to be that for other young men. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where the enthusiasm comes from, but I got to have parental buy-in where we can do it the right way. Right. Um, and I think explaining that, hey, this is how things are going to go. This is what it's going to look like. So don't let it catch you off guard when it happens. Sort of like you were talking about. I've got to prepare the parents for the situation where I grab their kid by the face mask and get in his face and 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 let him know how to correct what he just did right. um, in, in a very enthusiastic way. If he's unmotivated, he can be motivated. Um, and uh, for them to have our back, that that's really important. But um, it sucks to lose, <laughs> right? Uh, losing in sports is not fun you can learn a lot from it. Um, but it's not fun. So if you signed your kids up to have fun, winning is fun. Right. Uh, right. Losing is not fun. It is not fun to play a game where you lose 42 to nothing. I've done it. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. You'll wish you hadn't done it. There's no fun right. in losing. So we have to, and this, that, that's ultimately how I plan to get the parents buy-in and the kids buy-in. It's like, this is going to be hard, but it's hard because the only thing fun about sports is winning. Right. Uh, and it's a lot of fun when you do win. Uh, it's one of the best, uh, most self-gratifying, positive feelings that uh, you can get if you've ever won at a team sport with all your friends that you've done since you were little, right. where you've all kind of put in this work together. Um, but it's not easy and it requires a lot of work. And um that's ultimately how I intend to get the buy-in um, and why it will be important, but I'm going to have to sell the parents on like, 
This is going to be tough. You're going to be like, and I'm never going to hurt your kids. I'm never going to push them to a point where their safety is at any sort of a risk. But mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to be uncomfortable uh, because that's where growth happens. And that's how when, you know, after I, I attribute all of the uh, difficulty that uh, my coaches put me through to why I was able to stick it out at four years at a commission only job, barely making it like waking up at six, going to bed at 2 a.m., uh, just in an absolute grind for four years. Because and, and in that time period, while I may not have been making money, I was learning skills that have pushed me way forward in business, gotten me other jobs that I probably didn't deserve, promotions that I probably didn't deserve, um, because ultimately I had these things and, and other people didn't because I'd gone through that grind. But I could not have gone through that grind if I didn't know Dude, compared to running, you know, 30 gashers in uh, uh, the, the 100 degree Alabama heat twice a week, uh, I, I want it, you know, I would tell myself sometimes I can do anything for 90 days. I remember losing 15 pounds in a practice mm. um, the, the, and, and just the absurdity of having to weigh yourself before practice and after practice so that you knew how much water you had to drink before the next practice. And mm -hmm. one of them was 15 pounds. Um, that's how much weight I lost in one practice. And, and so all of a sudden, when you've been through these very difficult things, right? You, it, it's like, oh, no, I have to wake up at 6 a.m. to go to an office and like work really hard for a day. That all of a sudden puts it into perspective that I can do these hard things. Yep. Um, and that is what I hope to teach young men is that you can do hard things. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll add my assumption here. It seems to me if you're doing tackle football, mm -hmm. that yelling might be a critical component because <laughs> you and, 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 I, and I say that because if somebody's doing something that could lead to an injury, yeah, they might need to have somebody yell at them to make sure that they really get it. Like, hey, yeah. do not do that. Yeah, because that can lead to a serious injury and while we want to have fun, while we want to win, while we want to even maybe be a little bit aggressive and get some of our energy out, yep. we all want to go home and make That's sure important. all of our teammates go home and able and can come back and play again. Yes. Right. Like at the end of the day um, is interesting. Um, I think I think yelling, which is, you know, I, I think it builds some emotional resilience, mm -hmm. which sounds a little bit weird. And I don't mean just random yelling at everything like that. That would be crazy. But when I went to the military, I, I graduated high school and I immediately went to the military and I was going down to uh, Fort Jackson in South Carolina. And I remember my mom made a joke. Now, my mom was a hothead okay. growing up. Like she was she was not much bigger than me and she was very ferocious. I mean, she would make dudes your size, like almost cry like, you know, they would back up. OK, because yeah. she was just she just was very tough. Yeah. And um, so I got yelled at a lot. Uh, spanking was a thing in my house, uh, particularly for me. My brother and my sister were goody two shoes. So they got like one spanking ever each. And yeah. I got like one a day. Yeah. And um, maybe twice sometimes, you know, and um, she, she told me, she said, you'll be fine. She goes, I know they're going to yell at you, but. I've been yelling at you for years and you're fine. So, you exactly. know, just you, you're prepared basically. And she was right. Like I got there and the yelling was uncomfortable and I didn't particularly care for it. Right. But it didn't bother me. Right. Right. And when we, you know, that first day you get there, that's all they're doing for sure. Yelling and you're, you know, you're doing pushups and they're making, they're finding reasons that, you know, you, and they do that for a while, but I yeah. mean, the first day is kind of a shocker because you've, you went from, laughing and get, you know, and having fun with your friends and telling jokes to all of a sudden now people are just yelling at you, making you get up crazy hour in the morning, whatever, you know? Yeah. And they're like, Oh, did you just blink? Why don't you do 10 more pushups? And you're like, I, I did I blink. I don't even know. Right. And so, you know, and I remember the first day there were dudes crying. Yeah. Like, it, and we were in a, like an air conditioned building. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> or part of it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, at the part that I remember where we were, because we were in our barracks at one point you know, and like there were dudes crying and I was like, what the hell are you crying for? Right. <laughs> like They're just yelling at you. They like, they're not, right. Like, yeah. We're doing a lot of pushups and it sucks. And you know, like I can't feel my arms anymore, 
what well, whatever like you know it is what it is and i remember like one time they yelled at me and they were like you know because they would say things like oh do you want to go home are you 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 ready to you know are you ready to tap out whatever whatever they said you know yeah and in my mind i was like kind of because this is annoying but like not really <laughs> right. you know it's just like whatever and and i and i think it's i think sports is a good way to learn you know emotional resilience physical resilience because what happens when you get to, you know, like I've had managers that yelled at me, said a very unpleasant things to me, you know, maybe they shouldn't have, but right. they did. There right. I was. And I, and I, and I've seen, you've seen, probably seen the TikTok videos, you know, they get on there and they're like, my manager said this to me today. And you're like, that's it. And they're like crying. And they're like, I don't know if I can go back to work for yeah. a week. Yeah. I need time off. And you're like, you need FMLA because you got misgendered. Right. And, yeah. I, and I don't mean to downplay any of these things. I'm like, like, imagine the amount of emotional resilience you could have. Correct. Right. And maybe you should have played sports and maybe you should have had a coach that was going to yell at you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's though. And these people are going to be ahead because I think of it as like the, the individuals on the TikToks are now my son's competition for income in a free market society. Mm -hmm. And so if he has developed that resilience where he goes, OK, I'll take that feedback and I'll press forward. You know, mm -hmm. one of my favorite things Angela says is that the job is to eat shit and move forward. Right. right. I'm like, that is exactly how like I want the mindset to be. Uh, eat shit, move forward. I do that on a daily basis. Uh, I eat shit and move forward. Um, and, and it's important to teach that uh, to kids that, uh, right. you know, the world is not going to be friendly to you. Nope. Um, the easiest, the, the worst thing we can teach our children is that the world is going to be friendly to you. It is not. You should right. be friendly to the world. You should be kind to others. And but you the world, you cannot expect that in return. Right. Uh, because that's not reality and it's never going to happen. And if you're not prepared uh, for what this world has to bring to you, then I have failed as a father. Um, and so I've got to put you in situations to where uh, you are prepared, um, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. Out of curiosity, talking about the military, let's go back to that. After that first, the, so obviously, you know what they're doing the first day. They're trying to weed out the kids who definitely don't need to be there. Um, the, after that sort of when the yelling and, and, and that sort of stuff slowed down a little bit, um, ish. ish, right. Were there, were there individuals that they yelled at more and other individuals that they spoke a little softer to? I don't think so. No, uh, I think some people got in trouble more. Okay. Like myself. Yeah. Um, I, I was one of them. I, I got in trouble all the time. I was yeah. cause I, again, I was a hellraiser. Um, I bucked authority. Uh, I wasn't afraid of anybody yeah. because here's the thing. When I was growing up, I was a tiny little guy and yeah. people picked on me and in like middle school, it was rough. That was probably where I had it the roughest. And then eventually I just kind of got to the point. Well, one, I started, I started learning about comedy. So I learned if I make jokes about myself, that takes away all their steam, right? It's like that eight mile Eminem, like, you know, what are you, are you afraid of what they're going to say about you? Then he goes out and he basically raps about himself, yeah. you know, and then the other guy has nothing left to say because he like already used up all the, all the juice, yeah. you know? So I would tell jokes like that. Then I learned if you tell jokes to an extreme, yeah, then people shut up because they're too uncomfortable, you yeah. know, because like, oh my God, he just said that. Yeah. And so, and then you combine that with, I, you know, I had my mom who was my, you know, she was kind of like a role model because I, I, my dad worked and my dad was more of the quiet kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So my mom was the hellraiser of the family. And then I just kind of I, like my mom and I, other than being male, female, we're kind of spitting images of each other in terms of emotion and personality and stuff like that. And so I kind of carried after her. And then I just learned like the whole world is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. So... I can be afraid of everybody that I meet or I can just say F it. Yeah. Right. And I've taken a few beat downs and they're not fun, but I also know I can take a punch. So yeah. like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm willing to, you know, um, but I don't think my son needs to be that resilient because uh, I, I can be resilient to a foolhardy place. Yeah. And, you know, but uh, to answer your question, um, no, not really. It just ended up being who kind of stuck out more um, and they still found reasons to, 
you know, yeah, whatever, if somebody Ronnie. got letter in the mail and, you know, there was a heart drawn on it from their girlfriend and Hey, you know, now they're going to give you a hard time for that. So they, they always, they continually look they for spread reasons. it around pretty evilly. But eventually what ended up happening is you started shaping up mm -hmm. and you started basically learning what not to do. Yeah. And so it became a little bit harder because they had to find things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy at the beginning because you're constantly making mistakes. You, you laugh when you're supposed to be quiet, whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, the the reason I ask, my best friend and I played high school ball together. Um, and the coaches were extremely harsh to me. Mm -hmm. Yelling, demeaning, mm -hmm. talking down to me, like giving me just just degrading me in front of others. Um and he said that the coach revealed to him, and this, I don't know what this says about me, but he's like, Corey, I don't do that to you because when you drop a ball, I can come over and pat you on the butt and be like, you got the next one. And you play better when you're in sort of a positive mind frame. Mm -hmm. Jeremy only plays hard when he's seeing red and pissed off and motivated. And right. so I have to bring that for him. Um, right. so that was, I, I, I assume we will figure this out about our kids as they get older and their personalities come out. Um, but I was curious if that was a, a practice in the military too, where they realized maybe the best way to get to this guy is to yell, yell at him. Whereas this guy, yeah, I kind of have to light a fire under his ass. If it is, I didn't notice it. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a, you know, and we're, we're getting close to our time here. I think that's a, a good point to kind of end with like at the end of the day as dads mm -hmm. it's our job to learn our children and for me the I, i'm going to try to find the path of least resistance to get him where he needs to be yeah now if we need some resistance uh, like yelling yeah then that can happen right um and there are times and I'll, I'll give you a quick story. There are times where, and, and there's no nice way to say, it, there's no way to, to couch it, but that he needs to suffer. Yeah. And, but not like, not like tremendous hours. So he yeah. loves Minecraft. Yeah. Okay. And in, I don't know how much you know about Minecraft, but uh, there are animals and stuff that you can interact with. And so you can like tame a wolf. Okay. And then the wolf basically becomes a dog. You can put a leash on it. It helps you against enemies and stuff like that, right? So right. You, you can tame a wolf. And so generally, when you're walking around, the wolf will leave you alone unless you hit it. If you hit it, then it attacks you. And yeah. if there are other wolves nearby, then they also come and attack you, hmm. right? But otherwise, you, you, let, you let him be. So he had the wolf, and he turned it into a dog, and he's walking around. He decided, he's like, I don't want the, the dog anymore. And... I could, I was sitting to the side and he, I was, I was listening and he started hitting and you could hear, cause it makes a noise. It's like, Bruh. you know, and I was like, Hey, don't do that. And he was like, what well, don't want anymore. I was like, well, do whatever. I was like, but don't hit, hit the wolf. And so he continued hitting. I was like, all right, well, whatever. Yep. And yep. sure enough, all of a sudden I heard, Grr, boop, boop, and you could hear the noise of him getting hit. And he's like, Wait, and he sees her starts freaking out because he realizes he's not prepared to fight back against this yeah. wolf. Yeah. Right. And the wolf ends up killing him and he just loses. Ah, I died. I died. And I was like, told you that's what happens. And I was like, and I was not sympathetic at all. And, yeah. and so I gave him about 30 seconds. I was like, all right, you need to stop crying. I said, like, cause you did this to yourself. Mm -hmm. I was like, so you can't sit here and cry about it because I told you not to do this. And I took the controller away and I was like, you don't, you, I said, until you stop crying, no more video game. Yeah. And when he stopped crying, then we I talked to him. I was like, look, you can do things in the game, like whatever, but you need to learn that there are consequences. Yeah. And like, this is a bad thing that happened. If you don't want that to happen again, then don't do it. Which I think, you know, I felt like this was a lesson that he needed to go through. Yeah. And I gave him like very, pretty much no sympathy over this because mm -hmm. that's the game too. So he like, yeah. didn't actually get hurt. And hopefully... This will go toward real animals. Yeah, right. Right. Now he's a really nice kid. So I don't think we're going to have a problem with him hurting animals. Right. Um, but you know, you little boys do things, you know, they think it's nice to pick on the cat, they'll throw a rock at the duck, whatever, you know, stuff like that. So hopefully this lesson of me being harsh with him will translate to, 
when he gets older and he's around other boys and they're doing stupid things that he decides, I don't want to throw a rock at a duck because what if the duck comes out and bites me? Right, right. You know, he may not remember specifically, oh, that one time I played Minecraft, but he might just think in his head, like, don't hurt animals because they might strike back. Yeah. Right. And he doesn't need to be afraid of them in general. Just, you know, have proper well, well, boundaries. There are consequences for everything you do. Right. Yeah. There are boundaries. And when you exceed boundaries, negative things happen. Yeah. So be mindful of the boundaries. Yep. And that, and so hopefully that's the lesson that he gets. Hopefully when you're coaching and you tell the parents like, Hey, what's going to happen here is they're going to get yelled at a little bit or raised voice or what have you. It's going to be unpleasant, but there is a strong rationale behind it. Mm -hmm. We want them to win. We want them to feel good about winning. We want them to push themselves because, you know, especially when you're younger, I mean, when I went, when I went to the army, I had not yet learned that I could push myself beyond what I thought I could do. Yep. Right. Like I hadn't quite learned that yet. So I imagine a lot of the kids that you're going to be working with, uh, they, they will certainly not have learned that. No. And these will be good lessons for them going forward that they can take away. Yeah. So final words. Give me some final words. Yeah. Final so, words. yeah, I think final words are that uh, just to echo what you just said, it's our job to help connect those dots as a, as a father and association and teach those lessons. But we have to be the ones who allow them to suffer in a safe environment. We have to create a place where our children can learn painful lessons um, and uh, and then point to them and say, OK, what did we learn? Now what? This is the world. This is what happens. Now what? How do we respond? Um, and that's how we grow uh, strong young men. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. This will be great. Now, maybe, maybe we'll catch back up in a couple of years and hope so. see how things are going. I'm sure so I'll see you before long. Absolutely. I'll, I'll put you backstage here real quick and let me do my closing and then uh, we'll touch base for a moment or two. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for coming on. All right, folks. That was my show. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this episode informative and inspiring. Be sure to catch me Monday through Friday, 730 a.m. Eastern for an informed discussion on politics and culture. Also want to remind you, if you're a dad, doesn't you don't have to be, you know, the CEO of a company. You don't have to own your own company. You could just be a regular old dad that goes to work, comes home, and enjoys time with the family. Just if you're a dad and you want to and you want to just talk about things about relate related to being a dad, reach out because I want to have you on. Uh, as one guy pointed out a while back, he said, "Well, I'm not very important, but if you have nobody, I will jump on your show." And I said, "Sir, if you're a dad, you are important." And so, absolutely, and I brought him on the show. So absolutely, if you're a dad and you just want to get on the show and talk about, and you can talk about whatever you want to talk about, right? We could talk about sports. We could talk about if you're an auto mechanic, you know, if it's politics and you're 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 looking forward to bringing your son into, you know, debating in in politics and and what have you. If it's activism, whatever the case is, you know, and maybe it's nothing super special. Maybe you just want to talk and be like, hey, I'm enjoying being a dad. It's fun playing with my son outside in the yard. That's cool too. We want to hear from you. That's what Dad Talk is all about. Make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, or if you prefer my Rumble channel, you can go to youtube.libertydad.com or rumble.libertydad.com. While you're there, let me know how I'm doing by leaving me a comment. Last but not least, your champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. I want you to have a great week and weekend. Catch you next time. But for now, 